Hello everyone, Mr. Minnick is my name. Math is my game. I don't know what's in the air tonight, but I can feel it calling in the air tonight. Olo, Olo. Can you feel it calling in the air tonight? Olo, Olo. Isn't that how the song goes, Bill Collins? Anyway, today's title of the lesson, it's still chapter five, section five. The part that we're looking at today is Rene Descartes. So it's called Descartes's. That's probably not the way it's pronounced, but Descartes, rule of, rule of signs. Don't confuse it, it's not Game of Thrones. It's rule of signs. What kind of sign, you might ask? A stop sign? No. You'll see. So I'll just get right to it. The Cartes rule of signs says for a polynomial P of X, for a polynomial P of X, the following is true. I'm going to use two different colors. What color do you want me to start with? Blue. Here we go. The number, I'm going to abbreviate number with N-O dot. That means the number, the quantity of, if it's seven or eight or nine, the number of sine changes of P of X tells you the number of positive real roots of P of X. And I'm going to put an asterisk at the end. That asterisk at the end means there's more, and we'll talk about the more at the end. I told my second period class the same thing I'll tell you. This is vague. Probably doesn't make much sense. When you see the second one, it's not going to make any more sense than the first one did. The first part of it. This is just the first half of it. My first 10 years teaching Algebra 2, I didn't teach this part of the lesson because I didn't understand it. True story. My wife always tells me, she says, you're good at everything. I said, no, I just don't do the stuff I'm not good at. So what, 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 what color am I switching to? Red? I heard red first. The number of sign changes of P of, and I need a, another color that I haven't used yet, green, something that's going to pop. P of negative X tells you, tells you the number of Let's see, the first part told you the number of positive real roots. Guess what this one's going to tell you? The number of negative. The number of negative real roots of P of X. And again, there's an asterisk at the end indicating there's more. There's a caveat. There's a note, something that you have to consider. What color should I use for the asterisk? Green? Living would be easy if your colors were like my dreams. Red, gold, and green. Red, gold, and green. So the more part is or, or fewer, or fewer by an even number. Or fewer than that by an even number. And we'll, we'll spell all that out in a minute. Are there any questions other than do I have to, can I go to the bathroom up to this point? Any comments? Concerns? So an example is worth a million words. Here we go. Example one. This is the only example. Example. Consider. Consider P of X is equal to 3X to the fifth. I'm glad I had this one on the board all week long. I'm going to use it every day. Plus 16X to the fourth. Plus 7X to the third. 
minus 54x to the squared, minus 80x, minus 32. Consider that. And we're going to apply Descartes' rule of signs to this. So Descartes' rule of signs is going to tell us how many possible, how many positive real roots there are, how many negative real roots there are. So let's see. Let's go back and look. Let's maybe we'll split screen this. So the first part of this is in blue. It says the number of sign changes. Well, what are they talking about, the number of sign changes? Like plus or minus, yes, like plus or minus. So we got to consider what each term's sign is. We got to look at each term one by one and consider what each term's sign is. So this first term right here, 3x to the fifth, what's the sign of that term? Positive, good. Everybody agree? Okay. The next term, 16x to the fourth, what's its sign? Also positive, good. The third term, 7x cubed, what's its sign? Positive. The fourth term, negative 54x squared, it has a negative sign, good. The, uh, the, the next term is negative, and the last term is negative. So far, so good. Making sense. Everybody on board? Okay. I got news for you. Mathway does not do these. Mathway has no clue. So, what conclusion can we draw from this then? Well, first of all, we gotta we gotta go look back at this thing. It says the number of sign changes of p of x tells you the number of possible. I'm sorry, the number of positive real roots of p of x, or fewer than that by an even number. We'll, we'll worry about the back end after. But we gotta know how many sign changes there were, and people can't people can't count. I'm included in that group. I'm a lousy counter. I can't count that well. How many sign changes does that function P of X have? I hear one. Anybody else think something else? I hear two. Anybody else think something else? Four? Well, let's, let's look. The sign starts off as being positive, right? So there's no sign changes so far. From the first term to the next term, it's still a positive, right? So, so far, there's no sign changes. F from positive to positive, it's still positive. So there's still been no sign changes. You with me? Okay. So then we get to a negative. Ooh, that indicates our first sign change, right? It's negative. It's still negative. Did it start change again or no? It's still one, right? Still one. And from negative to negative, it's still one. You with me? So what conclusion can we draw? P of X has how many what? Has one positive real root. So far, so good. So that's just the front half of it. The back half of this requires, I was using the, the digging metaphor, the back half of this requires some work. The back half of this is going to require you to get out some old piece of equipment, some old piece of machinery that you're probably going to have to do an oil change on, that you're probably going to have to change the tracks on, that you're probably going to have to hire a mechanic to come in and fix. The next part of this talks about P of negative X, right? P of negative X is where people screw this up. What color did I use for that? Red? Red, red. P of negative x equals what i got to do is i got to take the original function p which has a three in it and something to the fifth and then plus 16 and something to the fourth and plus seven and something cubed and minus 54 and something squared and minus 80 times something and minus 32 and there was an X in here, 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 and there was an X in here. But not, I'm not putting X in there. What am I putting in there? I'm putting a negative X in there, a negative X in there, a negative X in there, and a negative X in there, and a negative X in there. Some people think, well, you could just flip the signs. No, it doesn't work like that. You have to set up that step right there. If you don't do that, it's not, it, it's going to let you down, and it's not going to, uh, I don't know why I didn't save that. 
So, if you don't do this, I need to make that opaque. There we go. If you don't do that step right there, if you don't do that step, maybe you could guess the right answer, but I don't trust myself guessing. I'm a bad guesser. A horrible guesser. Anyways, we, what we got to do is we got to simplify this. We've got to simplify each one of those terms. So p of negative x, p of negative x is uh, when we take a negative x to the fifth. That's negative times a negative times a negative times a negative times a negative. Is that going to be negative or positive? It's going to be negative. So minus three x to the fifth. So its sign is negative, right? Let's go to the next one. So now we're looking at the next one. Now we're looking at negative, or I'm sorry, 16 times negative x to the fourth. So that's a negative times a negative times a negative times a negative times a positive. So what's that going to be? Plus or minus 16x to the fourth. Plus. So that's plus 16x to the fourth. So that's positive. Let's go to the next one. Negative x times negative x times negative x is going to be negative times positive 7 is going to still be negative, right? So that's going to be minus 7x cubed. So that's negative. Let's go to the next one. When I square a negative, it's, it's positive, right? But I'm multiplying positive x squared by negative 54. So what's going to happen there? It's negative still. It's negative 54x squared, so that's negative. The next term, I got negative 80 times negative x. What happens there? It's plus 80x. So that's positive. And in the end, I have a negative 32. So what's the sign of that? Negative. So let's count our sign changes. How many do we have? From here and two. From here to here, negative to positive. That is our first sign change, right? From positive to negative, that's our second sign change. Negative to negative, it's still two. Negative to positive, that's three. Positive to negative, that's four. Four. What can we conclude about P of X? P of X has how many of what? Has four negative real roots asterisks or fewer than four by an even number. What's fewer than four by an even number? An even number is something like zero. Well, four minus zero is still four. An even number is something like two. What's four minus two? Oh, so it could be two or or zero. This is weird. This is weird. Maybe we better take an inventory of this. Maybe we better go split screen. I was telling my second period class about eating steak. I'm going to make a table to, to, to keep all this organized. So the number of zeros that this could have, if I think about it, how many total how many total zeros should this particular function p of x have? How many total zeros should this function have? Five. How'd you know that? Leading exponents, coefficient, it's five. So this total is always going to be five, right? So part one of this, we said, well, there's going to be one positive real root. Part two of this, we said, well, there's four sign changes of p and negative x. So this is going to be a four. Now, you might notice that I left a little bit of space in the table, right? There's a reason for that. There's a reason for that. 1 plus 4 is already 5, so I guess this table in the middle is going to have nothing in it. The 1 still going to be a 1. But what else did we say that the, that the number of negative real zeros could be? It could be 4 or, or 0 or 2, right? So this could be a 1, and this could be a 0 or a 2, right? 
Well, let's, let's see. What's our total have to be no matter what? Our total's got to be five no matter what. Huh. All right, one plus two is f only three. So, so what would I have to have right here then? That's going to have to be two. Hmm. Okay. One plus zero is only one, and i got to add up to five. So what's this got to be? Four. Does anybody know what the heading is of that third column? How on earth did you know that? Seem like the next one? Yeah, the, the, the two columns, the two columns over here, whoop, I want, I want that to be opaque or translucent. The two columns here represent real zeros, right? Zeros are either real or not real. And, uh, and if they're not real, we say they're imaginary. And yesterday we had that theorem that said, what happens with imaginary roots? How do they show up? In pairs. Do you notice how those columns numbers are always going to be even? Oh, it's all starting to make sense now. Yes. Tonight's homework, 19 through 22. You think you can handle it? I want to see those tables. I want to see the P and negative X work. If I don't see it, it's a zero. I want to check your homework on tomorrow. Have a nice day. See you. Good.